Hello, everyone. I'm going to take you through the process of um, the Choice Project Checklist and how to take notes and find information in Gale. So the first thing you need to do when you are choosing a Choice Project is you need to look at your study guide, whether it is humanities or science, and you need to choose one of the guiding questions and then one of the subtopics that are listed under the guiding questions. Make sure that it's one that you have not researched previously because each choice project should have a new guiding question that you're working on. Then you're going to use the source starter that's already provided and you're gonna take one page of notes over that source starter. The next step, which I'm gonna to give to you in a little bit more depth, um, you're going to use the Gale database to find a second source and to take notes um, on that information for your second page of notes. So I'm going to log in to the middle school. And as you can see, I've already entered my password. So it takes me directly to this page. The password that you would need to enter is learn. And then you can just save that like I have and it'll automatically um, take you there. So I'm actually interested in um, an aspect of science that's kind of related to humanities. So there's a little bit of overlap, but the second guiding question here says, how have ancient civilizations evolved? And then under that C, it says um, foraging and migration. So I've already looked at this resource. I've already taken notes. And now I'm just curious about the wild edible plants in Indiana. So that's what I'm gonna type in. So that's pretty specific. Make sure that you spell everything correctly. And I looked around in here and I couldn't, I could find things that are talking about Indiana. Um, this looks interesting, edible weeds from yard to yum, but it doesn't look like it offers a ton of information. It just is like a list of um, responses from a Facebook community. So I don't think that's the source that I want to use. Um, notice here that there are like 308 news articles. But again, a lot of them focus on Indiana, but aren't focusing on the wild edible plants, which is my main focus of the topic. So I have this video here that I'm interested in, and you might need to refine your search a little bit. Maybe it's just in North America. And remember that this is just a starting point. This looks like um, a whole unit of study, which isn't exactly what I'm needing right now. So I'm gonna come back to this video. So a couple of things that I like about this video option is that it has the transcript available. So um, I can print the transcript and I actually already did that. And it ends up being like two pages, so it's pretty brief. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to my drive. Um, you can use your MS account. And then if you look on your drive, this magical Gale in context folder will appear and you can see um, the transcript that is available for you. So I love that because it already saves your source and it gives you that source citation which you will need um, later on. So I think that's really great. So I'm going to um, go ahead and, oops, wrong session. I'm going to go ahead and just start going through kind of the process of how I'm going to take notes over this video. So I watched the video and um, I also read through the transcript, okay? So I have the title. Um, Gale is a database. It is not your source. So acknowledge that you use Gale, but the actual source is the New York Times company. Just like you use Google as a search engine, Gale database is similar to that. They don't come up with their own sources. They just provide um, different sources that are already credible and trustworthy for you. 
So um, I provide the information here. There isn't an author, and I know that right away because if you scroll down to the bottom, just notice that it starts with the title. If there was an author, um, that would have been the first name listed. So that is important to note. Um, almost all of the information that you'll see in Gale um, will be in, to inform you, explain maybe a problem, a situation, or event, or describe something. Um, entertainment is not something that you're going to see in Gale, probably. Um, I think that the Facebook comments might be borderline entertainment, but I do think it is um, just important for you to know that this information is already vetted for you. So it's going to be inform, explain, describe. The persuasive pieces are going to be in opposing viewpoints. That's where you're going to see a lot of your persuasion. Okay, so it is informative. And I have read it and I've watched the video, which is great. If you have earbuds, you can do the same thing. You can also listen to it um, if it's just like a, a written article. And I think the overall main idea is about edible plants and weeds in urban Oakland, California. So will this reading support the reason that I'm reading it? I said yes, um, because it does teach me about foraging. So that's interesting. But I do need to, I wanted to learn more about native edible plants in Indiana. So obviously that just is more research that I'm going to have to do, which is fine. And sometimes you might not find like that detailed, um, specific information in Gale. And so once you've used a Gale source, you need to touch base with your teacher to get approval to find maybe a source in a broader um, search database. So the next thing you're going to do while reading is complete vocabulary, main ideas, and supporting details. So there were lots of vocabulary words in those short two paragraphs. Um, I focused on organic and stigma, but there was also like water solu soluble, forage, biomass, cultivated pedigree, bio oh, biomass I listed twice, but um, so there were aficionados. There were lots of vocabulary I could have used. Um, if you don't find any words that you don't know, just focus on keywords, words that are really significant or important um, to the main points of the article. So the word organic was important to me, and I actually wrote a definition in my own words first because I kind of already had an idea of what it was, and then I just double-checked and referred to the dictionary definition. Notice I used quotation marks around it, and then I put it in my own words and use it in a sentence, excuse me. I fully understand uh, what organic means. Stigma, again, I had an idea, so I started with writing it out in my own words. And then, um, and then I went to the dictionary and I used quotation marks because those aren't my words and I used it in a sentence, I can understand it. So something that you could do is you could definitely add these additional vocabulary words to another piece of paper. Um, you could you could print off another page like this, or you could just type it or write it out in a notebook. But I want you to ask yourself this important question. So can you understand the basic important ideas of the text and meet your original reading goal without understanding every word? So I don't want you to get so bogged down in the vocabulary that you're losing sight of your purpose, right? Your purpose is to gain understanding. So I did not need to really define all of those additional words because I had a good understanding of what this source was talking about without having those details. Um, but the other, the other case may be true too. Maybe you defined these two vocabulary words, these two key words, and you realize I still don't know what they're talking about in this source. Okay, if that's the case, then you do need to continue defining the vocabulary words until you feel confident that you have a good understanding. Or if it's just too overwhelming, then then maybe, maybe you're down here and maybe you need to choose a different text or maybe you just need additional support because the vocabulary words are just really hindering your understanding of the text. So it's okay to stop here and to realize 
that you need to find a new source or you need to support. That's what this whole process is about. And then main ideas and supporting details. The main idea is you're wanting, you're wanting to think about those five W questions, the who, what, when, where, why is this important, right? Why are you reading about this? What's the purpose? Um, so in 2015, I wrote who, what they were doing, where they were doing it. And I added some important details about urban foraging, their mission that they shared. And then page two, they shared about some skepticism or some reservations that people had while foraging for like weeds and eating weeds essentially. And then they just come back to the benefits of those. And they also bring another person's perspective into it. So I wrote down some statistics that were listed. Statistics are pretty easy to find because you'll see a number, typically a percentage, facts, um, even a specific date or a specific person mentioned um, is factual. But be mindful of the opinions that are there. Even though this is to inform us, there were opinions. For example, um, Phil, Tom, and Bob said that the weeds were super tasty. Um, I might not agree with that, right? That's their opinion. And then my opinion, um, I just kind of reflected on the idea of foraging and I asked a question here. So um, feel free to put your questions in. I also asked another question kind of here in the supporting details. Like I, I provided a supporting detail, then I, then I was curious about what they meant by underserved communities and what that looks like in California. And then finally, you know, what did I learn? What information or knowledge did I gain from this article? So that is how you kind of go through the reading notes outline process. Um, the intention and the hope behind us, this is that it takes, um, it does take a little time. It took me probably 20 to 40 minutes to do this whole process. So it does take longer, but hopefully you're going more deep, deeply into the reading and you're really developing a well-rounded understanding of your source. If you have questions, please let us know. Thanks. One final thing I did want to come back to before I let you go is just making sure that you check with teachers once your notes are completed and have this checkpoint. You conference, you talk about your notes and sources, and then you kind of brainstorm ideas for your high quality product before you create the high quality product. Please don't forget that checkpoint, that's very important. And then once you have this conference, um, before you actually come to the conference, make sure that you spend some time looking at this uh, rubric, which maybe your teachers can go over with you. Um, and then give yourself an evaluation over your research notes and your high quality product. Touch base with your teacher, have your teacher conference, and then the final step is that reflection piece. So again, if you have questions about the um, choice project research, the notes, this process and checklist, um, please reach out and let us know.